with all of our biogeochemical cycles, we always have reservoirs where the element or the molecule is stored most of the time. We also need to have a mechanism by which it moves from its reservoirs into uh, organic or living things and then back again. This time we're talking about a biogeochemical cycle called the carbon cycle. And there's really two main reservoirs here. Uh, the first one is in the atmosphere. And carbon in the atmosphere, of course, is in the form of carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide needs to uh, go into living things. And it does that via plants through the process of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is the process of bringing carbon out of the atmosphere into living things. And we say that what's happening is that the carbon is being fixed. So it's carbon fixation. Uh, the carbon gets stored in the plants, firstly as glucose and then as other carbohydrates like cellulose, etc. And the carbon is fixed or taken out of the atmosphere through photosynthesis. Now, from this point here, it can go back up into the atmosphere in a couple of ways. Firstly, the, um, the carbon is eaten by our consumers, for example, our cows or bulls. So they uh, consume, goodness, I'm not doing very well with the legs today. So they consume the, um, the plants and they breathe out carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide goes out in the breath. But as well as that, and particularly when we have organisms like our cows uh, and other ruminants, other organisms that eat grass, is they actually produce quite a lot of methane um, through their digestive system. The process of breaking down the grass, etc., produces methane, um, and methane also contains carbon. And of course, it's coming out the backside because that methane is in flatulence. Now, so that's one of the ways in which carbon goes back up into the atmosphere. When these organisms die, um, there's organisms on the ground and in the ground decomposes that break down the dead organic matter and also release carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But under certain conditions, when trees die and get buried underground for millions and millions of years, or certainly thousands of years, they form fossil fuels. So coal, gas and oil. So carbon that gets buried and compressed underground for millions of years becomes fossil fuels. So that is the other reservoir for carbon. We've got carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as a reservoir and we've got fossil fuels under the ground and under the ocean that also are, are a reservoir for fossil fuels. So we have this nice balance, it's a cycle, continuously cycling. However, enter humans. Humans come along and dig up the fossil fuels and burn the fossil fuels in um, coal-fired power stations to provide electricity and that releases the carbon dioxide in a process called combustion. So burning of the carbon, burning of the fossil fuels, releases carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere at a very, very high rate. Now, of course, it's not just in coal-fired power stations. It's also the burning of gas, and probably even more importantly, it's the burning of oil and fuel in our cars. Um, and the the, the gases, the carbon dioxide that gets released through the process of burning fossil fuels goes up into the atmosphere. So why is that important? Well, it's disrupting the carbon cycle because 
instead of having a large reservoir of carbon under the ground, that's now being removed and put up into the atmosphere. At the same time, trees, the carbon fixes, are being removed. So we're taking it out of the ground and we're removing those things that remove the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So what's happening is that our wonderful blue planet, this is our planet Earth, um, and here's our wonderful Australia. You see, we've got carbon dioxide in, well, it, let me talk about the atmosphere first of all. So if you imagine if the Earth was the size of a basketball, a basketball, the atmosphere is only as thick as a single piece of paper. So it's very, very thin. In that atmosphere, obviously, we've got nitrogen, and we've got oxygen. We've also got carbon dioxide. Now, this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere actually provides a really important role to keep our Earth warm, because what happens is that sunlight, or energy from the sun, gets trapped inside the layer of the atmosphere and bounces and gets retained within the atmosphere, so we don't cool down as a planet. However, when we've got more carbon dioxide than uh, we should have in the atmosphere, well that acts as like an extra doona or a greenhouse and more and more of that heat is trapped within the atmosphere and the earth gets warmer and that's certainly what we're seeing. There's uh, a significant correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from human activities and the increasing average global temperatures and that's why and that's why they call it a greenhouse effect because not that we do it in Australia but in some parts of the world uh, to grow plants in the winter time uh, to keep them warm you grow them under glass in a greenhouse and that's the thing that's happening with our earth is that the greenhouse effect is trapping in that heat again it's something that is due to human uh, endeavors removing trees burning fossil fuels.